tonight um, from my home in Afton, Minnesota. I am Krista Rimel, the owner and CEO of The Point Retreats, and I have the honor and the privilege of speaking with Dr. Jared Siegler this evening and Dr. Brandon Brock. They are two incredibly intelligent individuals who are going to be teaching a group of high-level clinicians about functional neurology. Um, and I've just been speaking with them for the last half hour, and we um, have some incredible plans put together for this group, and I am really excited to put this retreat together. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to our speakers and let them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit more about them, uh, their professional background. Dr. Brandon, I'm going to start with you. Hey, thanks a lot, Krista. This is a really an amazing opportunity where we get to come together, Dr. Siegler and I, and, and I, I practice in Dallas, Texas. I, I'm a chiropractor, chiropractic neurologist, and I, I'm also a, a nurse practitioner, mainly in orthopedics and neuro neurology and, and a lot of stem cell work. And so in this really cool environment where it's very, very different and it's destination based and there's all these neat little cooking activities and art activities and other kinds of extracurricular things that we utilize to teach brain function and integration. It's, it's really a different sort of hands-on mechanism to not just be something cool that teaches you about the brain, but it's also really cool because it helps your brain. It's away from a lot of pollution. It's away from a lot of the distractions of life. And I think as practitioners, we need to really unplug ourselves and then go into something where it's very, very positive and non-toxic. So it's designed, I think the cool design that we have is, yes, it's going to be a great place to learn and there will be a lot to learn and it's going to be very clinical and, and people you know, will be able to bring cases and we'll be able to discuss them in a very sort of a, just laid back atmosphere where people don't have to worry about being so formal. And I think that I'm looking forward to the entire paradigm shift, which is so badly needed right now where we're not all sitting in these very uncomfortable chairs and these gigantic rooms with, you can't control the temperature and we're not out in nature. There's times I've been in cities that are beautiful and I've never once even seen the city. I just went from the airport to the hotel and then went right. from the hotel to the airport. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. hundred so, percent. And the point yeah. is very different than that, and, and it creates this whole new kind of healthy learning and living environment for clinicians. We just had a group of clinicians uh, out for a CME retreat a couple weeks ago, and they were so blown away that we were equally as concerned about their well-being and their opportunity for self-care that I think that was created more value than anything else. I mean, they were like, wait, like I get to have a massage? I get to go take a hike. I get to do yoga and get a CME for it. And I mean, we really want to foster the clinician's health and infuse a lot of well-being activities like culinary classes um, and art classes in there for the clinicians because um, what you guys are going to teach and absorb is, is phenomenal and, but intense. And so I think for the clinicians, it's important that we really balance that in our time there. And that's what makes the point so unique is that it's, it is like the perfect brain balance learning platform. So thank you for sharing that, Brandon. I'm gonna turn things over to Dr. Jared now and let him introduce himself. Yeah, yeah, so I'm Dr. Jared Sigler, uh, DC, and I love the brain. I love functional medicine and functional neurology, but um, to me, it's just the people in front of you. Um, and that's where the focus that we really wanted to have is, um, because, you know, functional neurology, it's really learned in person. It's something you got to do. You can't just read about it. You can't just kind of like see it, ha like see it from afar, like being hands on. Mm -hmm. And to us, that was really how we wanted to go is not so much deep dive into the big words and all of these pathways, which are always kind of fun to do and like rattle off and but really, well, what does this mean? What can we do about it? Why is this yeah. happening? What's the interventions? How do you actually assess a system or an area of the brain um, and maybe have it be reliable? Or why would it maybe change? Because like autonomic function, for example, I know Brandon knows like sometimes we'll do a neuro test on somebody seated and it's completely different than when they're laying down or standing mm -hmm. just, just on that fact alone. So. Right. You know, but that might not be something that you just kind of know unless you know, unless you've like been there and witnessed it. The learning curve can be really steep. 
Yeah. And we wanted to try to focus on shortening that curve, but having a good time at the same time yeah. and not yeah. it just being like suit and tie, super stuffy. Um, I don't even dress up for those types of seminars anyway. So. Right, right. <laughs> I can yeah. And Jared, if you don't mind, I'm going to share with, uh, with the followers here what you said, that you have a new pair of comfy pants you're buying for the point. Because that's yeah. that's what it is. It's like slippers and comfy pants and campfires and outdoors and it's just this totally chill, relaxed setting. Yeah. Yeah. And that's to me was super important because as clinicians, a big thing is burnout. Not just clinically, but like Brandon was saying, a lot of travel and everything. Right. And I mean, you're not really we might be if we're at the Marriott, we might be presenting good information, but you're probably not in an environment where you're actually going to retain a lot of that information. There's yeah. like a reason most people buy the replays and stuff. Sure, um, sure. But you know, the way I was taught to do things is I would watch somebody do it, they would watch me do it, and then I would know how to do it. Yeah. And I think with these series of retreats that we have, that's really what we're going to be able to do is have people watch us do it we'll watch them do it know they can do it and just start mm -hmm. rocking and rolling and really build from there as we keep going through it yeah and that hands-on clinical application of high level learning is incredibly important and you just don't get that in a large hotel conference room i mean you and dr brandon would be you know 50 rows in front of people and here I mean, you two will both be kind of within an arm's reach of those that are attending. And so you can have these really meaningful conversations around, you know, patient case studies and, um, you know, clinical application that you just can't have in a hotel conference room. Um, yeah. So people are going to get to know both of you and they can have a lot of Q&A time and then yeah. kind of have that with the fellow attendees because it's usually about 30 people. And it's a really intimate, cozy, comfortable setting with the speakers and guests. Yeah. Plus, we'll definitely assess everybody there. You can't turn it off, right? You just yeah. kind of like do it. So no, yeah. and that's honestly like I selfishly got into neurology to kind of fix myself and make sure. sure I could like everything's okay with my wife and daughter. It's just now like we're in a position to be able to like give that information to other yeah. people too yeah. and not just like kind of like wizard of oz like hoard it behind this curtain or something yeah. Yeah. um and i you know and i know brandon has some stories about why he get into neurology but i think that's why most people get into neurology it was either them or somebody they really care about yeah. and they just saw maybe the current way things were being addressed not really being as fulfilling as mm -hmm. maybe an all-inclusive type of model might be right right yeah, Brandon, are you open to sharing what drew you to functional neurology as a specialty? Um, I was just convinced that, um, you know, my the, the initial thing that I learned and the initial degree, degree that I got was chiropractic, and, and mm -hmm. I just needed to understand why it worked. Mm -hmm. I needed to understand why it, it was, I felt as if there was another component to the physiology behind, I mean, I saw it working. It was, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty clear and that's why it still exists you know people see chiropractic care working and so i wanted to understand why and then you know i had a neurological issue as well that i got treated and it made sense why i got better from a neurological perspective so it has a lot of meaning to me and the reason why i learned neurology and then you know i think that the most important part of this is that yeah we're talking about neurology but you know when you get jared and i together that you can't one of the things that always happens now anywhere I lecture is it breaks out into this integrative session. So mm -hmm. some people talk about medicine and I'm like, cool, let's talk about medicine. Some right. people talk about nutrition. I'm like, yep, let's talk about nutrition. And then of course people want to bring in neurology and everybody, you can't get a group of people together and everybody is really completely streamlined and interested about the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. and everybody has different patients that are struggling with different things and they themselves are struggling with different things so having that integrative diversity is probably the coolest thing and especially when you know Jared and I get together you know at, at you know sundown and we're like okay you guys just let's bring up a case and let's just walk through it yeah. and as we beat that you know into as we beat that into shape and give it some meaning it will be integrated and people will learn more from that, right. those experiences than probably anything that they've done all year. Yeah. 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 Oh, so impactful. 
And Brandon, you have a really unique background in that you are a doctorate of nurse practitioner and a DC. And, and I think, so you have kind of this really holistic paradigm and how you probably approach what you teach. He's actually but, three doctors in one. Don't let them fool you. So. <laughs> He's well, I, look, I, I just do what, what my, my, here's my motto in my practice now. I've really kind of just dropped any identification as far as I'm a functional this or a functional that. Right. I'm just, I just try to be a well-rounded practitioner and yeah. I give my patient whatever route I think they need. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you a good example. I have had patients that have come in that needed, seriously, they needed blood thinners and without them, they, you know, would probably have a serious problem. And then I've had some people come in and there is no drug for what their condition is, but there is nutrition for it. Mm -hmm. And then I've got dietary stuff and I've got my family that works with me on some of that stuff and coaching. Yeah. And so I think what healthcare is missing right now, and the re I'll just kind of get down to the bottom of this. I love this because it is so non-Western medicine. Yeah. Yeah. And Western medicine is, is a hundred percent needed, but it is how many people can we pack into a day for under payment mm -hmm. that is difficult to get mm -hmm. and a bunch of red tape and everybody's overstressed and underpaid. Yeah. It, it is, it is the antithesis of that. It is a hundred percent different. Mm -hmm. And so I like this because it is an integrative mechanism that pulls everything together to really get down to the root of somebody's problems rather than just see them very quickly, give them something so they can get out the door. Right. Right. Yeah. And the patients that you're seeing are clinically very challenging. I mean, people coming to you with neurodegenerative disorders are going to be some of the most challenging patients in Western medicine or integrative medicine. And most Western medicine clinicians kind of with the tools that they have today are like, I mean, pharmacologically, I there's so few kind of, you know, recent discoveries that have made any true impact. So yeah, I think you're kind of merging the best of both worlds here. <laughs> And it is, it does have to be that way. And I mean, I think like the way I kind of view like my clinical day, I would say I'm kind of almost like an ER for chronic disease or something like that. Mm, where I like that. Um, I like that. Well, I mean, today was a couple different autoimmune diseases, a head injury, Alzheimer's, pandas. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, so you're kind of like a GP where you're yeah. kind of like all over the place, but sure. it's for these chronic diseases. It's not like asthma and earache or cough or maybe a fever, right. um, you know, so that's where clinically we have to kind of like work through things. Like to me, I, I limit my caseload to six patients a day. They're hour long visits, but I have to like protect myself because yeah. there's a lot of pressure. Like the last patient I saw today, like I was saying, um, she's starting, uh, my friend's mother is starting to develop Alzheimer's mm -hmm. at a very rapid mm -hmm. pace. Yeah. Um, so no pressure, right? Right. So, right. you know, um, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of par for the course because it, it's kind of, not ironic, but like, I know Brandon here is the same thing. Patients are like, oh, you know, I'm probably like this super complex case. And I just say, you're kind of like a Wednesday, actually, like, you know, not to dismiss the, what you're going through. It's obviously important. Um, but to me, that's where back to the education and the learning, um, you know, I just yeah. say, I feel bad for my like first thousand patients. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, I love for, that term. For we need ER doctors for chronic disease. I mean, that's a great concept, Jared. I think, uh, you know, our acute care model just doesn't, I think most people are recognizing it just doesn't work for yeah, cause um, chronic even disease. Even like Brandon said, like functional medicine and functional neurology, like to me, those terms are starting to almost be bastardized. Like yeah. when people say like, what do you do? And I'm like, I kind of don't want to say I do functional medicine, but that's probably the closest thing you might call it. Right, um, right. you know, so, but then I see like more of a green, like a this for that approach. And, and maybe that's where, when we present like how the brain works and not mm -hmm. just from, uh, a, a, like an area of the brain or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm thinking of like a network or a circuit, mm -hmm. um, but also metabolically like stepping back and why, and not just like, okay, you know, their right vestibular system's a little off. Let's just rehab mm -hmm. that. And well, you know, why is that going on? there MS lesion there like what's going on why is this like eroding to begin with right right 
I think it's uh, crucial. I mean, people have to have other outlets. And I think even clinicians and physicians are feeling that. I mean, how, you know, some of the retreats we've put on this year have been around clinician burnout, physician burnout, and that's happening because people are getting sicker and sicker. And, you know, clinicians need more tools in their toolbox on how to really treat people that are so complex, um, you know, like you're both talking about and seeing. And in medicine, we like to just kind of put these little silos in place and not step out of our own silos, but that's something else at the point we try to kind of dissipate um, because we've seen so many light bulbs go off for clinicians when, you know, here's one of the, my favorite stories. We had an endocrinologist and a naturopath discussing adrenal fatigue. And it was getting a little heated and people were looking at me like, are you going to step in here and do something about this? And I'm like, you know, I think we're going to be okay. We're, it's, we got to let it get to this level where they can then kind of appreciate what the other one is doing and saying, and you now they cross refer. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge success for the patient and the clinicians. And I mean, I think oh, go ahead. Sorry. That. Yeah. To me, that's huge. Cause, and that's where, um, I know we're, but we're all the same mentality. Like there's no such thing as a scarcity mindset, um, especially in the realm of all this. Cause there's what, like 2.5 million concussions a year or something yeah. like just in the right. United. I can't see all those people. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. You know, um, none of them at that burnout retreat. <laughs> yeah. Well, even yeah. if all the doctors that attend every seminar are packed to the books, there's still not enough doctors to yeah. see all these people. And that's yeah. the unfortunate like truth of the situation. Um, yes. you know, so, but no, it's really exciting because that's the whole premise is let's change this. Let's get yeah. people up to speed, have a fun time doing it, uh, oh, wearing some yeah. pajama pants. Yeah. <laughs> In our pajama pants and slivers. Yeah. That's the best part. Okay, so clinical question for either you or Brandon or both of you. For people who have not heard much about functional neurology, just trying to give them a little taste of how you would approach a patient. Um, right? And you can certainly share any success stories, you know, that you want to. But so I'm just going to give myself, I'm going to give myself as a personal case study. Um, and Jared, you know some of this since you've been to the point that I have a mother who has moderate to advancing Alzheimer's and I am an APOE 4-4. So if I were to come into you with, uh, say, brain fog and, you know, memory concerns in 10 years from now, what would you do as a functional neurology, uh, in functional neurology that differs from what someone might get, say, if they were going to a conventional medicine practitioner? Well, really more of an exam, which that's where with functional neurology, imaging is great, you know, um, but usually if you haven't had a stroke or something like that, um, then like, hey, you, you know, like the lady today, they ran an MRI and they like, you have normal atrophy for, for your age. And I'm like, yeah, but 75 normal is like really crappy. Yeah. Um, so like, let's look at how things are maybe just functioning. And so one of the things that was really off with her, she was missing a lot of targets. We use a lot of eye movements. I love them. Mm -hmm. um, it's mm -hmm. like the easiest way into the brain sometimes. Um, just to see if she could remember something and then reverse it. Very easy mm -hmm. eye movements. And she started to miss a little bit, which means she would forget and not hit the target right. right. Um, and then we started to work on some of her brainstem stuff. Okay. She had some tongue. We needed to do some tongue stimulation. Some of her pawns wasn't really waking up. So I was just yeah. like, hey, do you have a toothbrush that vibrates? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, do you have frozen peas? She's like, yeah. I'm like, get a, fro get a toothbrush, vibrate your tongue, put the frozen peas on the side of your face. I was like, yeah. then let's try some things. And then her eye movements immediately started to, she missed less. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's uh, that's where I love neurology because it almost seems like a magic trick because there's these moments where you're just like, oh my God, it worked. Mm -hmm. you know because that's how I kind of run through it Brandon's probably at the point where he just knows all right but I'm like well, yeah. let's try this mm -hmm, let's maybe try that and but when it works it really it's kind of like immediate because her son's like oh wow I noticed a difference and I'm like cool yeah. it's gonna go away it's not magic yeah you know but that's where on the long term like why is this happening because mm -hmm. we can exercise and stimulate regions of the brain but the goal isn't to have to keep like trying to learn how to ride a bike over and over. You right. should maintain that function. Right. To improve that neuroplasticity. Yeah. Yeah. So versus maybe somebody with Alzheimer's cause she, she doesn't want to fill the prescription that she was given by the GP, you know, right. and the neurologist is like, well, everything looks kind of par for the course for 75. Um, and she's like repeating the same story to me 
over and over. She did yeah. five times and I would say about seven minutes. Wow. So it's pretty, so wow. her working memory is extremely short. Yep, yep. So you're actually rehabbing those areas of the brain that have <laughs> some atrophy. I mean, you're regenerating That's neurons. the goal. Um, yeah. Because like the way, and without using big words, I say like the frontal cortex, like Brandon knows, just drives deep to memory centers deeper inside of the brain. And it's ipsilateral, it's the same side. So if we can start activating different sides of the frontal cortex and try to activate memory pathways and all these other things, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the whole goal, yeah. you know? And yeah. the beauty about neuroplasticity is it happens real time. Like she puts peas on the side of her face. She doesn't kind of feel it 30 seconds later. Hopefully she feels it, but that stimulus right. is immediately interpreted by the brain. Yeah. So that's why I love it because it like yeah. happens real time and you're like, hey, this is our window in. And then you just keep opening that window and going for it. Right. Right. I love that. Uh, I went to the IFM annual conference a couple years ago on neuroplasticity. And I will say even going in, I was kind of like, oh, geez, I wonder, you know what I'm going to learn. And as I sat and listened to case study after case study and watching video after video about functional neurology can do to, for patients who have little hope. I mean, I think mm -hmm. it's like patients and practitioners can hear anything. It's you're offering a whole other, you know, you're offering hope to these patients that like they can recover yeah. an element of, you know, kind of baseline, you know, daily living that they otherwise are just watching it, slip away. It's funny because 90% of the time people ask me like, is this really going to help? Because it seems so weird. Some of the clinical applications that we might use for the brain might totally seem unrelated. Like, yeah turning my toothbrush around and putting cold stuff on my face is going to help my eyes find targets and go backwards better. Right. Like, that doesn't sound cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it um, sounds but, like I should be able to do this at home without you telling me. But. Well, you know, cause, and that's where I just tell people like, it might seem weird stuff. Like I might have you wear certain colored glasses and start walking backwards and like point at the target while you're doing it or something like, I don't know yet. We're going to yeah. figure it out though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you're seeing improvement and there's certainly, um, you know, clinical research and plenty of case studies to back up the practice. I mean, it's yeah, you know, everybody loves research, but to me, the research sits across from me when somebody says, this helped me, this made me better, this made me feel worse. That's, right. I can't prescribe opioids like Brandon, so nobody's lying to me. So, right, right. you know, so I know like, hey, that helped you sleep better, that helped you like not knock over a glass of water better as you're reaching for it. Like, that's kind of all I need to know. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know? Brandon, how about you? In terms of like any any kind of success stories really stick out in your mind, um, you know, once you started working as a functional neurology practitioner? Yeah, it's it's been <clears throat> really a big evolution. I look back at the beginning and it, how terrible I did. Um, you know, but then you evolve and evolve and evolve and evolve and you learn, you know, and you go through different phases and, you know, I have a, a patient that I've seen recently that came in with an Alzheimer presentation and mm -hmm. really was having some hallucinations. And then we went through and in the world of dementia, we kind of narrowed it down to where we thought he had Lewy body dementia. Mm -hmm. and so we now have tests where we have mapped out every single gene for Alzheimer disease. And APOE4 is one very mild one, actually. There's many other ones that are much more powerful. We have APO enzyme that are E2, E2, or E2, E3, and they think they're in the clear, but they end up getting extreme dementia because the odds ratios are higher in some of the other alleles or the other genes that are there. So okay. we ended up running a test on this individual, and he ended up having major, major, major homozygous issues with coagulopathies and factor five issues. And he was having small miniature ischemic issues. And every time he did, he would have escape and hallucinate. Mm -hmm. So we ended up finding out that these were temporal lobe problems. Yeah. We did temporal lobe exercises, but we also were thinning his blood and then giving him nutrients at the same time to nourish mm -hmm. his brain. So mm -hmm. Now we have a layer of genetics and then we did autoimmunity and he can't, he has a gene where he doesn't do well with anticholinesterase medication. So he can't even take Alzheimer drugs. Hmm. Um, He's not so even we have, him. Yeah, we have a, we have a, gen, a gene level. We have a, an immune level. We mm -hmm. have a functional neurology level and a nutrition level. And it all kind of comes together now. And we're, we're really starting to build this model where we can put something together where it's got every facet. And then really soon, I just decided I'm, I'm going to learn about stem cells. So I got a fellowship oh. in stem cells. Okay. 
Yeah. And I really I think that pretty, pretty soon we'll be able to take these genes and we'll be able to use CRISPR technology and we'll be able to change them. And then we'll be able to change that organism. Their brain will change faster. It'll get plasticity better and they'll have a, a mechanism of recuperation where you don't have to worry about those genes being flipped on or off. So, okay. I mean, I, I just have a mission or, or a thought of where I think that it would be really cool for this to go. That's my, that's my version of it. And, and I know it's outside of the functional neurology world, but everybody has to learn little slivers before they can start to integrate things together because it takes time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being a full-time teacher and clinician for 20 years has gotten me to this point. Yeah, yeah. But these retreats and things like this, are the beginning, uh, everybody has to start somewhere or they have to evolve at various locations and places and, and with certain people. And I, the biggest thing I would say is with certain people, you have to have people that will sit down and go over things with you and, and show you something maybe beyond what you know or different than the way you think or else okay. you'll never evolve as a clinician. So for me, when I look at these neurological cases now, I go into functional neurology with eye exercises or with peripheral stimulation or receptor-based activation, but I always want to know what I'm going against genetically, immunologically, infectious, mm -hmm. environmentally, mm -hmm. and I lay that platform out, and then I determine how successful I'm going to be based upon all those other things that are, that are going on. So very, it sounds very complicated, and it is, but it's, again, a lot of clinicians are getting there to that yeah. level, so it's not really unheard of anymore. Right, right. Well, and after 20 years of experience and all of the different uh, specialties that you've been in and, and clinical um, spaces, you know, you probably have developed kind of this algorithm of how you formulate, you know, your approach to assessing a patient and then kind of categorizing where you need to prioritize your investigation and then your treatments. Um, if, if I'm not, then I'm not doing something right. Yeah, yeah. But I think you brought up a great point that people need mentors, they need teachers. Um, and that's really kind of why the three of us came together, um, as we have, because we recognize that. And, um, you know, I am so honored that the points can be a platform, um, for the two of you to come and teach a group, um, about how they can, you know, better care for patients who are affected by some, you know, really tough and complicated chronic diseases. Um, because I think we all know that's a big part of what's taxing um, our healthcare system, you know, today and, you know, kind of every level. Um, so you are solving some big problems in the healthcare world and you want to teach others how to do the same, which is phenomenal. Um, so I appreciate you coming to the point and, and doing just that. And, and you're not just doing it once, you're going to do it twice and then you're going to do it a third time. And so over the course of 2020 to 2021, Dr. Brandon and Dr. Jared are going to come and um, offer three specific retreats. So those of you who are interested in functional neurology, you can certainly come to one or you can come to all three. And um, I'm going to let uh, Dr. Jared or Dr. Brandon just kind of give you a quick high level uh, description of what they're going to talk about, you know, in one, two, and three. Um, so people can understand if they want to come to one or come to all three. Yeah. Um and Brandon was discussing earlier, which I think is really good. So there's already some pre-existing seminars done. It goes over all the slides, all the diving deep in kind of the clinical knowledge that it would be good to know, you know, um, maybe if you're a blank slate to the brain coming in, uh, even though we're going to apply the KISS principle to everything, it might be like drinking from a fire hose. Um, I mean, that's the goal. I'd rather people be overwhelmed than underwhelmed. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, yeah. But really kind of laying out the map of the brain, the maze, as I kind of like to call it, <clears throat> start presenting that, um, kind of know what we're looking at, what we're seeing. And then the second one, focusing more on the metabolic. Well, why might we see degradation or hyperexcitation or whatever kind of label or metabolic process we're thinking? Like, how can we evaluate that? How can we have multiple layers of interventions? Again, the KISS principle, I like for very complex patients to try to give them the simplest solution possible. Because mm -hmm. I found if you're chasing the right pony, it seems almost not too easy, but you're like, that was kind of simple. Because um, the body will heal. I think as clinicians, we kind of entertain ourselves thinking we do it, but you know, like the old saying, surgeon cuts, body heals, chiropractor adjusts, body heals, herbalist gives herbs, body heals though. Yeah. Um, and then the third one, really reaching kind of that... Um, kind of that culmination 
of these are the case studies. This is what it's like in front of you. Like not only just kind of maybe reading about a pandas patients, but what do you do if they're almost catatonic and just laying on the couch and you can't have them do extra eye exercises and you can't kind mm -hmm. of use maybe some of these other tools? How, how do you actually think through this process as somebody's life kind of depends on it in front of you? Mm -hmm. It's very different in paper than seeing it right there. Sure, and I, sure. I think that's where we want to try to prepare clinicians as much as possible by that yeah. third one for like, this is when people are probably going to need you the most. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so, it's going to be so good. I've obviously looked through the agendas and um, I mean, you guys have missed nothing. Like it's, it's phenomenal what you, what you've put together. Um, and then our job at the point is just to infuse a lot of health and healing and self-care for the clinician kind of in between all the um, impactful learning. And um, you know, with that, Jared, you've been to the point. And so kind of taking things from that clinical realm to adding in a little bit of fun factor, um, to those listening, I've heard, you know, Dr. Jared and Dr. Brandon talk about things like clinical campfires and, hey, let's phrase this like neuro in the north woods. And the truth of the matter is a lot of the learning is going to be by the campfire. And we do sit out by the moonlight and we do reduce EMFs and we do eat um, incredible food um, that's healthy and nutritious and kind of falls under all the food as medicine principles. And you can pick how you start your day, whether it's a you know, cardio workout outside, or it's, you know, yoga by the lake, but we try and take care of your brain as much as you're taking care of others. Yeah. Um, and so if you can just share a little bit about what you experienced when you were at the point, um, maybe that's kind of how we'll, we'll end our, our conversation yeah, here. Um, you really get in tune with nature, which to me is like the ultimate form of medicine. We were designed to be outside in the sun and the heat and the cold like when you look at us validating something like grounding like now we're just able to start measuring that concept but it's something that's been known um i'd say in our innate intelligence because i'm a chiropractor so i totally believe in that thousands yeah. of years like we evolved on this earth we're meant to be part of it not separate from it and i could really feel that there um mm -hmm. plus just the connections between the people um yeah everybody just has you know very generous very nice and it's just a blast like i haven't met anybody frowning on a kayak yet so um <laughs> that's a good quote yeah. i like that i'm gonna use that yeah, right like if you're frowning on a kayak you're doing it wrong so. right right i love it yeah it's so true um and brandon i'm excited for you to come and experience it and i've mentioned to both of you that you know my goal is to make sure we have a tp out on the point peninsula by the time you two get there so we uh we like to be creative we like to make learning fun and we like to create healthy living environments for all um that come and, and i'm just honored and excited that you are bringing um, people who want to learn about functional neurology and that the two of you are dedicating a lot of time and energy and resources to share what you know and have experienced. Yeah. Oh, and I also wanted to make sure everybody knows um, the I'll take three. If you use the promo code, I'll take yeah. three before January 1st, 25% off, which is like really awesome, actually. So yeah. Merry Thank Christmas. you for that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> really? glad you remembered that. So between now and January 1st um, of 2020, the I'll Take Three, you just use it at checkout um, when you're registering for each uh, retreat and it will take 25% off of your stay. And we have a variety of rooms that you can pick from um, and we have cabins right on site on our peninsula. We have some across the lake if you prefer a little bit more of a separation um, from a bigger group um, and a variety of different room types and sizes, but um, the the point um, log cabins are all really comfortable and we try and make your stay as just easy as possible. Yeah, I sleep pretty hard there because I'm very like blue light EMF sensitive and yeah. that's where last time it was only the moon and <laughs> there's no Wi-Fi. So. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that your group um, was <laughs> saying, you know, they were so, people get so stunned by the stars. I'm like, gosh, that's yeah. right. You're in the city most of the time. You just don't Yeah, stop they're from Toronto. Them. They're not used to like, uh, they were like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've actually been here for a little while, but, but it's fun when you yeah. see them, kind of re-see them after not seeing them from, you know, being around so many bright lights for so long. But yeah, um, I hear that more and more. And oftentimes when you go somewhere new, you don't sleep as well, but we don't really hear that at the point. Are like oh mm -hmm. i slept so no. good last night and to me sleep is sacred 
like all the Alzheimer's talks yeah. and all that stuff, everything. I'm like, if I could go back to the younger me, like, what could I change? I'd be like, sleep, just do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, this um, recovering night owl nurse is for sure working on her sleep because, you know, I have um, susceptibility to Alzheimer's. And honestly, it's made a big difference already. So I, I'm right there with you. Yeah. I got to sleep right for, yeah, it's not a good recipe for functioning. So, um, and we got well, a functional, functional neurology retreat. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm excited. This is going to be great, everybody. So yeah. uh, bring your comfy pants and a doctor's bag if you got it, because we're going to be getting in the trenches. I love it. Yeah, and we're going to have, love it. We're going to have, a, we're going to have a surprise extracurricular activity of some sort that will probably be borderline dangerous and irresponsible. However, <laughs> yeah, you got we'll to however, we'll have sure to make sure you sign ability. the waiver. <laughs> You got to yeah. sign the waiver first, okay? That's yeah. the we'll have all the waivers. Don't worry about that. Brandon, when I click end, you better tell me what it is. So I make sure I insert that in the waiver. <laughs> yeah, uh, I haven't figured it out yet, but we're going to come up with something, believe me. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it. it's somewhere in the right left brain balance. Fun is in there, right? We got to hit it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you right. don't take an opportunity to pass up on that. So. Deep right orbital frontal. No. <laughs> Well, thank you to both of you for your time this evening and um, yeah, for all that you're planning. You are both incredible people and I can't wait to have you up to the point. So thank you. Thanks. See you guys. All right. Bye. Take care.